Well, I, I, I think I've, uh, I've grown, you know, just personally in terms of patience. You know, I, I've tried to be patient about a lot of things and I, I think I've succeeded. I got way more okay with having a ton to do all the time. I strengthened my connection with my grandmother a lot, which has really meant a lot for me. Just seeing a relative of which I have few getting older, um, having to take on some responsibilities and helping her out. Um, it's just strengthened my commitment to be a compassionate person. Hi, my name is Alex Reynes, and I'm the creator of 2020 Unmasked. Thanks for watching. Like you, towards the end of 2020, I realized what a traumatic year it had been. I am also a storyteller, and I believe in the healing power of stories. So I set out to collect the stories of 2020, the good, the bad, the painful, and the enlightening. This is the result. These are real people, and these are their stories. I have gotten to tap into a lot of the emotions that were coming in and what I was feeling this year from the, the dread, you know, the fear, the, oh my God, how is this going to, how are we going to do, are we going to make it, is this going to, you know, is this the end, just a lot of that stuff going on and then, you know, being able to meet each one of those things and really unpeel it for me and come to what's true, what's true for me. So a lot of time to really self-reflect, grateful for the spiritual practices that I have to be able to bring that in every on a daily basis. So I feel like I didn't get too far off, you know. Um, and um, I did a lot of learning, a lot of classes this summer that were really awesome. So I think that was helpful. That helped change me and kind of send me in, in a direction of where I want to be going for 2021 and beyond. The big thing is um, I found a streamer on Twitch who is very big into mindfulness and um, does mindfulness coaching, which for lack of a better term, is essentially life coaching but not really because uh, um, technically I think you need to take classes and whatever um, but the big thing for me is being more mindful of what I what I say my thoughts um, working on paying attention to what I spend my energy on um, because in a day you only have a finite amount of energy and to get worked up over something that really isn't worth getting worked up over. Um, it's, it's not necessarily a useful use of your energy or a good use of your energy. Um, I'm trying to limit my amount, the amount of time I spend on social media. I don't know that I spend any less, but it's something that I try to be conscious about at the very least from 2020. I think I have a better perspective on I feel like I have a better perspective on seeing people's what's the best way to describe it? It's like more empathy for other people's lives I guess if that makes any sense mm -hmm. you know and it's like, even when it's people that I thoroughly disagree with, like I understand, like I can say, I understand why you came to this decision. I think it's wrong and I think it's atrocious. And I think you're, you know, making a bad decision, but I understand why you did it. And like, also like, you know, like I am not a person of color, you know, I don't, I don't have that, you know, I have the privilege of, of my white skin and not have to worry about, you know, walking down the street and, you know, dying because I happen to be standing there, you know, <clears throat> and it's like, 
giving credence to those people that have these issues and making sure that, you know, I can support them has, you know, really opened my eyes to seeing, you know, the plight of other people. I've had to learn patience with myself. Um, first and foremost, I'm spending entirely too much time with myself. Um, I've had to, I strengthened my connection with my grandmother a lot, which has really meant a lot for me. Just seeing a relative of which I have few getting older, um, having to take on some responsibilities and helping her out. Um, it's just strengthened my commitment to be a compassionate person. Um, well, at the same time, pulling on the other end of me is just seeing the indifference and cruelty of other people has made me very angry. So, um, I don't know, I guess it's like, it's been a growing process in a lot of ways in patience and compassion, but also like, sometimes I feel like I'm losing my patience. So I, it's, it's hard to say, like, if it's been an, entirely just a growth process or if this has there will be some things I have to work to undo that 2020 has set in as well but on the whole I think I've really learned to be more resilient um well got sober of course um which was like so fucking huge and uh the um I think I've just I've become a lot more trusting I've become more reliable more responsible um, as a result of getting so I become a lot um, I've I've learned how, how I've learned how to protect my energy and have more boundaries um, the uh, but I, I mean like I've sort of learned it's like I mean, one of the big lessons is like, if I'm going to be there for someone, if someone needs help, the first thing I have to do is get to 100% myself and like show up as, um, I have to show up healthy if I want to do any good. And um, like, I can't show up off balance. I can't show up, you know, insecure. Like it's better if I'm like, if I meditate, and meditation has become a huge part of my life. And um, I decided to I decided to take ownership of the space that I already had, and I just needed to believe in it. I'm more so confident. Um, my ability to navigate my business and how. I perceive it as opposed to other people perceive it. I got way more okay with having a ton to do all the time. Like I mentioned before, um, even through college, through everything, I'm used to having a lot to do, a lot on my plate and being fine with just being busy and tired all the time. But I've been way more appreciative of resting <laughs> and, and having that kind of uh, not busy period, uh, just a little relaxation, a little rest and, and working hard when I am. Intensely, I've grown so much in taking personal responsibility. So all of the relationships that I have, have benefited from that because I'm, I'm taking responsibility. I'm saying, um, I'm sorry for things that I need to say I'm sorry for. I am still working really hard on learning to ask for what I need. That's been really hard for me. It was easier to be crabby with somebody because they didn't give me what I needed without me asking. And that's ridiculous, but we all do it, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so a, a lot more personal responsibility. I've been able to clarify my values and check in to see that the choices I'm making really reflect my values. And then that led to this whole, well, okay, if I'm making these choices based on my values and these other friends of mine aren't making the same choices, do they have different values than I do? And I'm learning that that's none of my fucking business, pardon my French. Mm -hmm.
that's their responsibility. You know, I just need to be clear on what's, what's my responsibility and um, we'll see what happens going forward. I'm a Scorpio. So I really like a deep relationship. Not sure that on the other side of this, I'm going to have the same level of relationship with some people that I thought I had going in, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be different. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be far less judgmental because I'm learning to do that. Just stay in my lane. Right. Right. It's given me more time also to, um, educate myself a little bit more on some of the social justice issues that I care about instead of just reacting when something hits the news. And I like that. Um, in 2020, I think I have grown in 2020 because I just feel like I learned how to be able to not be bored by myself in my house. And I realized that I have so many things that I can do, such as like organizing my room, doing homework, doing schoolwork, reading, um, watching movies, TV shows. Um, and I used to um, go out after school every single day because I thought that if I stayed home, I'd be bored. But actually, I found so many things that I could do. Um, I started working out more. I started um, making like new recipes and like baking and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I've grown a lot during 2020. There's been a lot of like, especially with the politics and stuff and the Biden administration coming in. I mean, I guess that's 2021, but technically we found out that Biden was gonna be a president in 2020, which has made a huge impact because now everything feels a lot lighter on everyone's shoulders in my house. And um, of, of course the Black Lives Matter movement, we were very involved in, um, which was a huge thing in the world and um, just very crazy. And I don't even know if that would have happened if the coronavirus like wasn't a thing, I guess. No, it probably would have, but it's, it had like they come in line with each other which was very crazy and the world has evolved a lot since 2019. Well I, I, I think I've, uh, I've grown you know just personally in terms of patience you know I, I've tried to be patient about a lot of things and I, I think I've succeeded uh, but I think I've also grown in um, you know one specific way um, uh, as, a, as a writer for the stage uh, there, there's two women in town that I've done two plays with. Um, uh, they have their own theater company. And a couple of years ago, uh, we did a play where I was in the cast with one and one directed. Then we did another show where the other woman directed. And I was in, a, I was in the cast with uh, this uh, one woman. I, I, I directed the first one with both women. So we're now looking for a script for myself and, uh, and, and, and the, third, the second woman. And uh, so I took this opportunity to write one or actually three, three short plays for us. So we're reviewing that. And, uh, and as a writer, I, I've also been pursuing other projects and other opportunities. So it's certainly given me the time to, uh, to grow as a writer. Come to realize how important the things that I took for granted really are. The freedom to move around. The realization, I used to go to concerts all the time. Loved going to concerts. To, to, to me, it was it was just experiencing the music for real, right up front. Um, we went to a Green Day show a few years ago. Um, two and a half hours of sheer joy, but we were surrounded by several thousand people. That's not going to happen again. All right. Um, I have had to learn to adapt to that. I'm not quite sure I've accepted it completely because I think like many other folks, we are waiting desperately hoping that we can combat this thing and turn it around. One of the things I think I and others have come to realize is we've read about plagues before, we've read about um, contamination movie everybody's heard about the black plague oh yeah that happened in 1345 in europe but it was in europe okay um tuberculosis we we've, we've had you know a hundred thousand people died in this plague and that plague but nothing's ever affected us or me in in my particular circles and where i've lived new york city uh new york state traveled around all of a sudden i think it's become part of the public consciousness end of mine, where this is possible. It happened once, it can happen again. 
uh, I think I have grown by realizing or coming to a greater understanding of the world around me, not just in a virtual sense, because we're all, we're all living, I'm living virtually. I live through the computer now. And I would spend hours on it before, but now it's my main way of connecting with the rest of the world. But it's becoming more and more real. I think the effects of what's happening to other people around the world are starting to have a lot more impact because now everything's serious. Now everything's really serious. The entire world is now under quarantine or should be under quarantine.